today we are tackling the monumental topic of the United States national debt, a staggering $34 trillion and counting. Have you ever wondered where this colossal debt comes from, why it has surged so dramatically in the past 20 years, and what it really means for our economy and your wallet? Well, today we are breaking down the debt's origins, exploring its rapid growth, and explaining the implications of the country's debt to GDP ratio exceeding 100% and what that means for you. This is where we are going to cover a multitude of items all around the United States national debt crisis and what you can do to be on the lookout for is it getting worse or better. If you're curious about how government spending impacts your financial life, then today's episode is packed with insights you can't afford to miss. So let's dive in and learn more about this debt crisis. Let's go. Welcome to the Financial Mirror. Financial Mirror. Where future success is reflected in our knowledge of fixing the one thing we can control ourselves. Welcome to the Financial Mirror and thanks for joining me today as we continue to work to improve the one thing that we can control ourselves. Here at the Financial Mirror, it is not about the numbers and spreadsheets alone, but about transforming and educating you on money so that you can make smarter financial decisions. If this is the first time you are joining in, don't forget to hit subscribe on YouTube to be notified of all the new episodes as they are released. If you are listening to this on Rumble, don't forget to follow the channel, like the video, and share it. If you're on a podcast platform of your choice, don't forget to leave a five-star review and a written comment as both go a long way in getting this information out to more and more listeners. So today is a, a interesting episode and it's kind of it's kind of going to be in two parts, right? Not today's episode, but uh, over the next two weeks, I kind of wanted to, to just catch everyone up on everything that's going on. Um, this whole national debt thing, I've, I've seen it you know, popping up as, as there's more and more spending bills coming out, there's more and more things that are being done We're we're in an election year. There's a lot, there's just, there's just a lot of like government changes happening. And this tends to, to, to spawn questions and uh, conversations around what are we doing about this national debt crisis, right? And we can look at, at, at a, a you know, years and years and you know of history and this debt crisis is a you know it's probably the biggest crisis we've ever seen because it's lasted for decades right like it's been a problem for decades so I wanted to really kind of cover that piece and next week uh, I will be releasing a episode about kind of like what is the state of the economy, right? So this week we're just talking about the debt crisis, but don't miss next week where we're going to talk about kind of what is the actual state of the economy and and where are we at right now? We've kind of we've kind of finished up this whole COVID thing, uh, just a, a, a sheer dream at this point. And everything is is kind of is it is it bouncing back or or you know kind of hearing all over the place in terms of the economy so just in 2 weeks i wanted to get you exposed to everything that's going on but more importantly just educate you around uh some of the things that i see some of the things that uh are going on but just wanted to, to really give a chance to to touch on those items uh, because it is a a big deal and it does impact you, right? It does impact you, and and we're we're seeing that more and more now. Um, but today is all about the national debt, and if there's one thing that that we know for certain is that our national debt today is not slowing down, right? Like we can see time after time that this national debt is growing. Uh, we, we you were over $34 trillion and counting, uh, continuing to go up, continuing to build. Uh, and on average, that's, that's really running about, you know, over just over a hundred dollars per person in, in debt. If you, if you break that all out. So a uh, big deal, Big deal, right? A huge deal, actually. Uh, but today, I wanted to cover kind of the origin and the the consistent growth that we've seen in the United States national debt over the years. 
Uh, by the end of this episode, I really want you to have a good understanding of uh, kind of where our debt all started, some some history on it. Uh, not going to get too much into the boring stuff. Really going to talk about uh, some of the the main the main contributors, uh, but. This whole thing, it kind of, it kind of sounds like this like fictitious thing out there, and I, I know, I know, I know. A lot of times, people are like, "Well, it was trillions of dollars. It's not gonna. It's gonna be very hard to pay that off." And you're right, like it is going to be hard. Uh, but I do want to talk about kind of where it all came from and just give you some insight into um, some of the 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 pieces or, or data points out there, and, and give you give you some some information around what you can be on the lookout for to see is this getting better or worse right and, and there's a couple of items you consistently watch to to see that so uh the first place that i really wanted to kick off with uh is i wanted to talk about the kind of different types of debt right like when we look at uh the national debt and, and where it's at we kind of have like two categories we have public debt which is going to be debt held by individuals corporations state local governments all these type of things federal reserve and then you kind of got this intergovernmental debt right that's that's those things like social security right that's that's kind of like those other items that uh don't really fall into specifically um uh, kind of the, the, the pensions and, and all those things, but, uh, that, that one piece like social security that, that just is there and it's like other governmental programs, like all those type of things kind of fall into that intergovernmental holding. Um, th that's kind of like the two categories, right? The two categories. Now that's not the, we're going to kind of go one micro level deeper because Keith, thinking about it in a sense of public debt and intergovernmental holdings, like that doesn't really mean much to you probably. And it doesn't really mean much to me if I'm totally honest. Um, what I like to look at, and when I, when we think about this national debt, what I like to look at is kind of what are those major sources of debt over the, like, like in terms of where this stuff is coming from, like, where is it originating? Like, where is it really, really, really coming down from? And it truly is a, a product of kind of three ish areas. Um, I'm going to really just talk about two because the other one is a, is a, a little, little iffy on if you could actually call it that, but, um, uh, sources say, you know, economic stimulus and bailouts. That was really, you know, just the 2008 financial crisis, COVID, things like that. So let's disregard that one. There's really only two places that a lot of this debt comes from in terms of the majority of the debt, right? And I'm talking the majority of the debt. It comes from military spending, the defense budget, right? And it comes from social programs like Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Like those are the two biggest pockets of debt, right? And when we look at it, it's, it's an interesting concept that we're, we're looking at here, right? Because, because 22% of, of the debt comes from Social Security, 14% of the debt comes from defense, national defense, 12% uh, comes from Medicare, right? Like, like we're pushing 50% already of the debt comes from those two places. So everything else really like let's let's call it for what it is like it's it's not a huge 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 deal um as much as 50 percent come from those kind of two categories the 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 national like defense money that's spent and kind of those social programs specifically medicare medicaid and social security okay now the interesting part the first place I wanted to look at this was the national debt, right? Because it's, it's totally mind blowing, right? So I found this chart uh, at Peter from Peter G. Peterson. What a what a that's a cool name, right? Like Peter G. Peterson, right? I, um, anyways, like maybe it was only cool to me. Like it's like Peter is Peter's son, right? I, I see what I did there. Okay, anyways, uh, <laughs> so. Peter G. Peterson Foundation uh, had this chart and I thought it was the coolest thing. So you can see right here 
on the screen. And if you're not, if you're on a podcast, totally fine. I'm going to kind of like break this down into a very short segment, but because uh, I do want to move on to the rest of this episode, but it's just interesting how much money we spend on defense like this. And this is only 14% of our national debt, right? 14%. $877 billion spent on defense, national defense in the United States, right? 877. Now, in this chart, you can see 10 other countries spent 849 billion. So just for easy math, let's just call it 20, you know, just about 25 billion, right? Like just just rounding. I know, I know, I know 20 25 billion is not exact. But let's just call it. Let's just say 25 we've spent 25 billion more than these 10 countries combined. China, Russia, India, Saudi Arabia, United Kingdom, Germany, France, South Korea, Japan, and Ukraine. Combined, we've spent over $25 billion by ourselves more than them on defense. Now, how does that break down? Like, is that, is the Ukraine package in that? Like, I, I got it. I got it. There's questions, more questions. It doesn't matter. $25 billion for 10 countries combined is, is, it's crazy, right? It's crazy. So, all I want to do is kind of just give you some some broad spectrum of how much debt comes from the things that seem like they are just belong in our economy, right? Like, like we just we need defense. Like you need to spend money on defending your country, right? You have you have borders for a reason. It makes you a country, right? If you had if you had completely open borders and people just running in, you don't really have a country, right? Like you don't you just have this like plot of land that people just happen to live on. So that's kind of that first piece. The other piece that I thought was very interesting, kind of just looking through and, and maybe you don't think it's as interesting, but I did was Social Security and like the Medicare Medicaid deal. Right. It's an interesting concept. So so 22 percent of your of the debt comes from Social Security. Now, that's interesting. And it, but it but it highlights it highlights that the whole conversation around, well, social security might not be there when you retire. Like if you're, if you're, you know, 20 or 30 now, maybe social security is not there when you retire. This is where that stems from. It stems from 22% of our debt comes from social security. It's an interesting concept. It means more money is being paid out than is being paid in, right? Because the only way it can become debt is if there is not a surplus of money coming in, right? That means we have more money going out than we have coming back in. So it's just so interesting to me that you 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 have this this thing that that if you work right now, you pay into it and the government is saying, "Hey, we owe you. Thanks for the money. We owe you. We'll give it back to you later. We're we're protecting your retirement like whatever." And in the end, there's a chance that it might not be there for you to take out because there is more money going out than coming in. At some point, that program has to go away, right? Like it has to fall apart. If we ever want the debt to go to change, 22% of it's coming from that program. It, the program has to go away. Now, before everyone comes at me and, and blows up comments about, I, I said that I wanted to get rid of social security. That's not what I'm saying. Because historically speaking, if we're totally honest and we look back, and I'm going to go over that in just a second, but if we look back, um, the biggest cause for a lot of this debt is is not that we that we don't cut things. We cut things. The problem is that once we cut it, we just replace it with something else. And normally that that something else is actually the new shiny thing is more expensive than the old dusty thing, right? So all I'm saying is that it's, it's, it's this cycle. It's this evolution that we've kind of gone through and we just continue to spend more money as a country. And that is horrific. Now, a couple of numbers that I wanted to throw out that are just, it kind of just shows the growth of national debt, right? So you can look at it over the years and you can see this chart that shows kind of over the past, you know, hundred years or what is the chart? Yeah, the chart's a hundred years, uh, kind of over the past hundred years, where has the national debt been, right? So when you look at that, there's, there's a, you know, a huge, huge amount of growth and you can really see it to the right of the chart. Um, but 
the biggest thing that I wanted you to take away is that over the past really like 40 years, there has just been this exponential growth that in this skyrocketing of national debt. So from 1984 to 2004, right? 20 years, the debt increased from about one and a half trillion to seven trillion, right? Still single digits, still single digits, like one and a half to seven single digit like increase. That was mostly influenced by military spending in the 80s, economic policies in the 90s, and kind of those initial stages of um, the after 9-11, we went to war, there was some spending that happened there. All in all, that's kind of where that, that jump happened. Now, that's, that's 20 years, one and a half to seven. Now, big difference, 2004 to 2024. Right. And we're just in the midst of 2024. We are from we went from seven trillion to, as I've stated already, 34 trillion in the same time frame. Now, key factors there was the 2008 financial crisis and covid. Right. Two two biggest things that that caused uh, that skyrocketing of debt. Now. You'll also see a lot of times where people will will talk about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act uh, that that Trump passed in 2017 that also contributed to a lot of debt. The problem with that was that it's not like like cutting cutting tax does not does not increase debt, right? Like look at that in, in its in its most simplest form. If I cut how much money I make. That does not equate to more debt in and of itself. Like it doesn't. Now, what would happen is if I cut how much money I make and I didn't change my spending, right? That absolutely, because now I'm trying to live on more than I make, right? So if you, if you, if your paycheck dropped a hundred dollars this this month, but you still tried to live on your previous salary, yes. You will overspend hundred dollars this month because you you budgeted for more than you actually were going to earn, right? So you can't say Tax Cuts and Jobs Act actually increased debt because there was an option. We're gonna we're gonna post this. We're gonna do Tax Cuts and Jobs Act to help out the people of America. However, we're gonna cut this spending to offset the the decrease in the amount of money that we're gonna bring in, right? That would have been kind of that balance. Now, that's like history that's where we're at where we've gone you know where we've come from where it comes like where the debt comes from but all of that is is a true like breakdown of what all this debt is and i truly hope that that is kind of eye opening so you can see where a lot of this this debt originates because it's not this like fictitious thing that just, you know, magically counts up like like the, the clock I had sitting next to my head earlier. It's this it's this thing that that it, it's just uncontrolled spending and kind of not cutting the losses. Right. Like if you've got Social Security uh, and you are 22 percent of your debt is coming from Social Security and you're still running Social Security cut 22% right there, right? <laughs> like, I, I know there's a lot of people. Um, I think it just needs to be restructured. I, I'm going to do an episode on it in the future. I just think that it needs to be restructured. So we'll talk about that later. But the biggest, the biggest thing that I, I want to um, move into is, is how we can start to, to see um, what, we, what, we, what are we doing about it? Like, where are we going with this? And what does all this national debt mean? Now, First thing I was going to, I want to cover is like what can you look for? Like what can you look for? Um, looking at the there, there's a comparison that you'll see uh, the debt to GDP comparison. Uh, it, it is a good kind of kind of framework for is things getting worse or are things getting better? Right. So the debt to GDP in which just means how much it's kind of like your budget, right? Like how much money, how much money do I have going out 
in comparison to how much money I have coming in, right? So GDP is kind of that that money coming in and the debt's the money going out, right? So debt to GDP. So this should be, if 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 we are zero-based budget as a country, this would be 100%, meaning that I have just as much money going out as I have going in, right? 100%. Well, GDP in quarter two of 2020, was 133%, meaning 30, we were spending 33% more money than we were making. Now, since then, that does that has gone down a little bit. Uh, in quarter four of 2023, with some of the data that I found, um, is 121%, so still overspending 21.62% to be exact, overspending of money that we are earning versus money that we are um, spending. So we we've got we've got to we've got to balance the checkbook, right? So any U.S. debt to GDP ratio over 100 indicates that the national debt is exceeding the country's annual economic output, like how much money it makes. So uh, kind of think of that like you have a credit card and you're spending more on that credit card every month than you actually make. So you can't pay it back in full. Right. So you get charged the interest and all those things. Right. So just look at it like kind of that that credit card. Now, what does this mean for you? Like, what does this national debt mean? Well, the first thing is there is a huge economic impact because of the national debt. Now, high debt levels, they lead to higher interest rates, and that kind of affects the ability for um, investments. That kind of affects the ability for, you know, home purchases. That kind of affects the ability for a lot of things, right? Uh there's other implications of economic impact like inflation. If the debt levels kind of undermine the confidence in how like people perceive the country, that inflation could change, that could change the 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 uh, temperature of the markets and really can can drive cost in different directions, right? So Huge, huge risk uh, is just that confidence. It, you know, the national debt doesn't by itself change, uh, you know, inflation, but it does kind of have a confidence level there that, that people can think about it and say, hey, man, like we are, this economy is kind of not in good shape. Like we're 100, you know, spending 20% more than we're making and this is not good. And they could start to pull money out of the markets. They could start to like just put in safer investments, like all those type of things, right? So that's kind of that economic impact. The other thing that that this national debt means is a you know a significant portion of federal budget goes to servicing the debt, right? So if we are putting a lot of money into servicing the debt, that limits the ability to to have other services paid for, right? So that's kind of that like that's like consistently watching your interest rate on your credit card go up and you're like, "Man, like I just, I, that was just money that I just kind of threw away because I just have debt sitting there. I've got to pay this interest cost that goes with it. That, that affects your buying power for what you can spend your money on. So huge deal there. When we look at that from a, you know, $34 trillion, the interest payment on that's, you know, quite a, quite a bit. So big concern there. Uh, and then public perception is another thing that people do care, like they hear the word debt and they do care about it. And there are huge concerns about national debt and how that affects customer confidence, investor confidence, like all of those things. People look at this, people care about it. They really do care about it. Um, And that's really where we have to start to drive awareness around a lot of people because The biggest thing, if you really boil it down, the craziest thing is that if you ask most people, they're going to tell you the things that the government spends money on, they don't actually care about. The the things that the, the, the American U.S. government spends money on, most Americans, the majority of Americans actually don't support, right? There's only one way to change that is, is put people in, in office that, align with where, what you think that the money should be spent on. Now, the biggest thing right here is that we need to stop spending money. So maybe if there were some like really awesome candidates that came out, I was like, yeah, like there's certain things we need to spend money on, but we're going to get to the basics and we're going to stop spending money on all this extra junk, right? We're going to cut those, cut those costs. Uh, 
Maybe that that that's what what somebody runs on. Hey, listen, I'm going to get rid of all the fluff. The fluff costs. We're getting rid of that. Uh, anyways, that's a that's a a a way that this can start to change. Is people, you know, I talked about that at the beginning, but this being an election year, it 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 truly is a chance for people to start to vote and put people in office that could potentially try to help shift this and turn this into another direction. We have seen periods of reduction uh, in national debt. Uh, you know, Bill Clinton back in the 90s, he did operate uh, a budget that brought our national debt down, right? Like kudos to that. Uh, but that's kind of like one of the very few times that that we've seen that happen. I think it's two times that, that I, that I was looking at, I think it's like in the forties, 1940s and 1990s, kind of two times that we've seen the national debt, like dip actually, you know, lessen in a year. Um, so that that's, there's certain times that that's just great, but right now the trajectory we're on is like this constant up, up, up or sideways like debt, right? We've got to start going in the other direction. Um, and just, just, Things that you can, like I said, you can really look out for is is look for the GDP growth rate. Look for a consistent, watch for a consistent growth rate above two or three percent, which generally considered healthy. Look for a, a strong GDP growth rate. That is a good indicator of a healthy economy. Look at interest rates. If you see rates continuing to rise, the cost of servicing the national debt, which strains the federal budget and crowds out other spending priorities. So pay attention to the Federal Reserve's decisions on interest rates. That does affect borrowing costs and that does change the temperature of the market because people are not are potentially not going to buy as much. Uh, inflation rates, always something, you know, look for the central bank. They're always aiming to be around 2%. Take a peek at that, something to, to consistently watch. Uh, like I said, next week, we're going to talk more about the economy. So we'll get into that a little bit more about inflation rates and those type of deals. Um, and then the other thing to, to really pay attention to is watch these budget deficits really be uh, keen to these different, different times that, that money is being spent unnecessarily, right? Like look for ways that the government could potentially, uh, cut back on spending and, and, and talk to people, right? Like you have more power than you think. Uh, and, and we all as, as, as citizens have more power than we think. Uh, but we've really got to think about like, how the budget is like the, the government just is not budgeting, right? Like they're just not budgeting. Like what we talk about here at the financial mirror, it, we talk about having a healthy budget. The government does not budget. They do not manage money. Um, and so there, there's a couple episodes I've got coming out and I, and I really, ho- I really hope that you, you, you get something out of them. Uh, this one today was kind of a setup for, for a few others uh, that I'm coming out with, with, with terms of the economy, with in terms of, um, you know, really, you know, digging into some retirement conversations. Um, so just be on the lookout for that, but Hopefully you got something out of this episode. Uh, it's super crucial that you understand the national debt. It's super crucial that you understand how important the you know getting this under control is because times like this where it's you know we're going into a voting season, times like this where uh, you're getting to hear like right now a lot of information is coming out about economic indicators and government policies and spending that's going on. Like just a good time to really be engaged with that to see kind of what's going on uh, and what you can do about it. Now, like I said, I hope you got something out of the episode. Uh, it, it, it's something that is is easily, you know, for some people it might be kind of boring, right? Like, but, but hopefully, hopefully I made it slightly interesting, gave you, gave you more than just a bunch of numbers, but something to some, like a way to interpret the things that you're hearing, the things that people are saying, um, and give you tools to the, to the, to the kingdom here to say, Hey, uh, here's what I can go look at. If I'm curious how the economy is doing, yeah, I'll just go, let me go look at, at the GDP growth and see what that is. Let me look at the inflation. Uh, let me look at what the interest rates are doing. Like, let me just look at these things. It's just a good place for you to start. Now, this has all been about government spending, but if you're curious about your spending and getting that and making sure that that's under control, you can always go over to thefinancialmirror.org, hit book now and schedule a free consultation today. You can sit down with me. If you're not budgeting and you don't want to end up in debt like the government, you can schedule a consultation with me and we can get you on a path to a very solid budget that's built 
for you. Uh, if debt's what you're trying to get after, we can get you a get out of debt plan and, and get you on your way to uh, operating above above the the threshold there. Uh, if you do want to get extra dose of sports stream, head over to thefinancialmirror.org forward slash shop. Pick you up some awesome financial mirror gear. I truly appreciate everyone tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this episode. If you are listening on a podcast podcast, podcast platform your choice leave a five star review and a written comment both go a long way in getting this information out to more and more listeners so like i said hopefully you got some out of this episode come back next week where we will be talking about the economy till next week continue improving the one thing you can control yourself peace well that wraps up today's financial mirror join us next week as we continue to work on ourselves change our mentality and to commit to achieving the success we always envisioned. Regardless of your platform, help us grow as a community. Please like, subscribe, and share with the people in your lives.